global strike. Hurricane alert. The US National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration predicts nine hurricanes to hit the North American continent in the coming months. Neuralink approved. Musk's Neuralink says the FDA approved human trials opening up avenues for more AI advancements. DeSantis's momentum. Donald Trump's latest GOP challenger gathers momentum as he eyes early voting states. Clown Parade. A circus comes to Lima for Peru's Clown Day, spreading cheer, joy and fun all around. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening to you all this Friday night. This is World News. Starting off in the United States, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis' fledgling presidential campaign aims to push forward after a troubled launch on Twitter, with stops in early nominating states including Iowa, New Hampshire and South Carolina next week. After an echoey presidential campaign launch marred by Twitter glitches, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is looking to bounce back, with stops in early nominating states including Iowa, New Hampshire and South Carolina next week. In his first series of public events since joining the 2024 race for the Republican nomination, DeSantis will make speeches and hold chats in a four-day swing across 12 cities from May 30th to June 2nd. Meanwhile, his campaign is trying to put the Twitter event with the company's owner, Elon Musk, in the best light possible. Just a massive number of people online, so it's um, servers are straining somewhat. The much-typed forum featuring Musk and others were beset with audio and connection issues. Former Republican President Donald Trump was quick to pounce on the Twitter announcement, calling it a disaster. But DeSantis defended the event in a radio interview Thursday, saying the live stream had now drawn more than 5 million listeners and that it had succeeded in creating buzz around his candidacy. Rob DeSanctimonious and his poll numbers are dropping like a rock. The day after the Twitter glitches, Trump, in a video posted on his Truth Social platform, mocked DeSantis. Is he a fool who has no idea what the hell he's doing? DeSantis' entrance into the Republican contest sets up a showdown with Trump, his one-time ally, who lost the 2020 presidential election to Democrat Joe Biden. He will have to boost up his charisma. Elizabeth Anker, an associate professor at George Washington University, says going up against Trump won't be easy. The challenge for him is that he is not a charismatic speaker. So I think that that is going to be, you know, a challenge for him to try to make himself seem that, you know, that people would want to hang out with him in the way that they imagine they want to hang out with Trump, while also uh, trying to be a more even keeled and uh, calm, uh, you know, somebody who can steer steer the ship in, in a more sedate way. Current polls show Trump with a commanding lead over DeSantis. Other declared Republican candidates include Nikki Haley, former U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, and Tim Scott, a U.S. senator from South Carolina. U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has said that they expect an average Atlantic hurricane season with an expected five to nine storms that will develop into hurricanes. However, that projection is less confident than usual due to El Nino as well as elevated ocean temperatures. Meteorologists expect up to nine hurricanes across the Atlantic Ocean this season. That projection on Thursday by the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration is average for the Atlantic hurricane season. But it likely guarantees a major storm between June and November. For the range of storms expected, NOAA calls for the following. 12 to 17 named storms with top winds of at least 39 miles per hour. Of these, five to nine are forecast to become hurricanes with maximum winds of at least 74 miles per hour. This includes one to four major hurricanes ranking as category three or above and winds of at least 111 miles per hour. Last year broke a six-year stretch of above average hurricane seasons. Matthew Rosencrantz, the NOAA's lead hurricane outlook forecaster, said that El Nino, combined with a high sea surface temperature, makes this season especially difficult to predict. But we are also in an active era, and having a strong El Nino with an active era and such warm SSTs, um, I've only seen it one other time in the historical record. There's not a lot of analog evidence for it. Uh, During El Nino, winds blowing west along the equator slow down, and warm water is pushed east, creating warmer surface ocean temperatures and the potential for stronger storms. Rosencrantz says the Atlantic Ocean surface temperature is warmer than last year, 
and as high as it was in 2020. And he estimates a 93% chance of an El Nino weather phenomenon during the height of hurricane season. Elon Musk's brain implant company Neuralink on Thursday said it has received U.S. regulatory approval for human trials for the first time, a major milestone for the company after an earlier rejection reportedly over safety concerns. Elon Musk's brain implant company Neuralink said on Thursday it had been given a green light from the U.S. FDA to kickstart its first in-human clinical study. It's a critical milestone for Neuralink after earlier struggles to gain approval. We're confident that it is possible to restore full body functionality. To... On at least four occasions since 2019, Musk has said his medical device company would begin human trials for brain implant to treat severe conditions such as paralysis and blindness. Yet the company only sought Food and Drug Administration approval in early 2022, and the agency rejected the application, sources linked to the company told in March. The sources said the FDA had pointed out several concerns to Neuralink that needed to be addressed before sanctioning human trials. They include the device's battery, as well as safety issues surrounding its wires and the protection of brain tissue. Thursday's FDA approval comes as U.S. lawmakers are urging regulators to investigate the oversight of animal testing at Neuralink. The company has already been the subject of federal probes, including at least one linked to animal testing and treatment. In a tweet on Thursday, Neuralink said it was excited to share the news of the approval, but that it's not yet recruiting for a clinical trial. Over the years, Musk has publicly outlined an ambitious plan for Neuralink. He envisions its devices to cure a range of conditions from obesity, autism, depression, schizophrenia, to enabling web browsing and even telepathy. And that both disabled and healthy individuals would be swiftly getting surgical implants at local centers. Neuralink and the FDA did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Microsoft President Brad Smith said that his biggest concern around artificial intelligence was deepfakes, realistic looking but false content, and also warned that AI must always remain under human control. As companies race to develop more products powered by artificial intelligence, one top tech executive has issued a stark warning. Microsoft President Brad Smith, whose company backed the creator of ChatGPT, on Thursday said his biggest concern around AI was deep fakes, realistic looking but false content intended to defraud people or compromise national security. In a speech in Washington about how best to regulate AI, Smith called for steps to ensure that people know when a photo or video is real and when it is generated by AI, potentially for nefarious purposes. Smith on Thursday also said in a blog post that machines should be subject to human oversight and that those humans should be accountable to, quote, everyone else. In short, said Smith, we must always ensure that AI remains under human control. This is especially critical, he said, when it comes to major infrastructure powered by AI, including the electric grid and water systems, and called on Washington to create new laws requiring the operators of these systems to, quote, build safety breaks into high-risk AI systems. Congress has struggled with what laws to pass to control AI, even as companies large and small have raced to bring increasingly versatile AI to market. Some proposals being considered would focus on AI that may put people's lives or livelihoods at risk, like in medicine and finance. Last week, Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, the startup behind ChatGPT, told a Senate panel that the use of AI to interfere with election integrity is a significant area of concern, adding that it needs regulation. Altman also attended a meeting with President Joe Biden and other tech CEOs, including those of Microsoft and Alphabet, to address AI concerns. The warning from Smith comes on the same day that shares of dominant AI chipmaker NVIDIA soared more than 25 percent on the back of surging demand, putting the company on the brink of becoming the first chipmaker with a market value of $1 trillion and sparking a rally in other AI-focused firms. 
North Korea has been reportedly sending out phishing emails to South Koreans, the majority of them impersonating managers of major websites such as Neva and Kakao. North Korea appears to have been impersonating the managers of major South Korean portal websites as part of an organized email phishing scam. Statistics released by the National Intelligence Service on Thursday show that the sending of phishing email was Pyongyang's most common hacking method from 2020 to 2022, accounting for 74 percent of such attacks. Sixty-eight percent of the hacking emails were reportedly found to be impersonating South Korea's major websites, Naver and Kakao, followed by financial institutes and media and foreign affairs and national security institutes. North Korean cyber scammers would send fraudulent emails pretending to be website managers in the hope of making the user download malware or hack personal account information through those emails. They also sent emails saying there's a problem with a targeted user's account security, duping users into clicking links. Other hacking methods include attacking vulnerabilities in security software programs and luring a targeted group into infected dummy websites. The National Intelligence Service, after releasing the report, also introduced ways to avoid these email phishing scams. They suggested people check email icons as emails from website managers use different ones from hackers. Email addresses, too, are slightly different, so checking spelling is recommended. The agency also said to put a cursor on a link before clicking it so that it can show a preview of a website, which may help people to distinguish whether it's an authentic link or not. There are a lot of programs in web browsers like Chrome where phishing emails are blocked, as there are many cases of cyber attackers impersonating website domains. Using these programs may help you. The National Intelligence Service also said victims of cyber attacks are now being expanded from national security officials to students and office workers, warning all Internet users to be cautious. We'll be back with more world news of this short commercial break. Welcome back. Almost two months after being hospitalized for bronchitis, Pope Francis thanked the doctors that caught the infection in a conversation with Telemundo. Pope Francis today showing the world his health is improving, almost two months after he was hospitalized for bronchitis. In an interview with our sister network Telemundo, the 86-year-old pontiff thankful the doctors caught the infection in the nick of time, saying had they waited even a few more hours, it would have been more serious. <laughs> the Pope laughing, saying when people tell him he looks good, he knows that's a compliment you give old people. Today, the Pope meeting virtually with the young people around the world in a town hall. But on his mind, the unending war in Ukraine. Francis saying President Zelensky asked him to help return the Ukrainian children taken to Russia, but sidestepping the question of whether Russia should return Ukrainian territories, saying it's a political problem. Francis reiterating his opposition to abortion and asking Asking the world to remember migrants leave their home countries by necessity, as his father did when he left Italy for Argentina. When asked what changes he still hopes to make as Pope, Francis joking that he needs to change, but says change is hard even for him. And as for the church, he says there is always more to do. It is insatiable. As Turkey enters the final stretch to Sunday's Kron's presidential runoff, politicians are turning up the heat on migrants. In Istanbul's migrant neighborhoods, the political discourse is driving migrants and new Turkish citizens into President Recep Tayyip Erdogan's army. Touching his nationalist credentials with the stroke of a pen. Opposition candidate Kemal Kilic Derulu has received an endorsement from the Turkish far right ahead of Sunday's runoff. The move comes after he pledged to send home the nearly 4 million mainly Syrian refugees who've been living in Turkey. Our project is ready to send all refugees back to their home countries without any racism. We, the coalition leaders, made a decision. We'll send them all back to their home countries within a maximum of two years. Kemal Kilic Derulu's tone started to shift further to the right following President Erdogan's strong showing in the first round of the vote. The incumbent has been accused of airing a doctored video during campaign events linking Kilic Derulu to the outlawed militant group, the PKK. 
The opposition is campaigning hand in hand with these terrorists. Will my nationalist citizens vote for them? With Turkey's presidential election in its home stretch, both candidates are leaving nothing to chance. President Erdogan picked up an endorsement from the third-place hardline nationalist candidate Sinan Oğan, who secured just over 5% of the vote. Analysts, however, are warning that Kilic Darulu's shift in rhetoric could backfire by alienating voters he desperately needs. Kilic Darulu is backed by an alliance of six parties, including the pro-Kurdish HDP. It's reiterated its support for the opposition candidate, despite his sudden lurch to the right. The Wall Street Journal has reported South Korea is sending lethal aid to Ukraine via the United States. However, authorities here say it's inaccurate and any decision to do so will only be taken after comprehensive monitoring of the situation in Ukraine. South Korea's military authorities say that a Wall Street Journal report on Seoul sending lethal aid to Ukraine is inaccurate. The report from Wednesday stated South Korea is supplying Ukraine with hundreds of thousands of artillery rounds. It explained that Seoul is transferring the shells to Washington, which will then be sent to Ukraine. There are inaccuracies in the content of the report. As you know, the international community is providing support to keep peace and stability in Ukraine against Russia's illegal aggression. South Korea, as part of the international community, has continued to provide financial or humanitarian assistance to Ukraine. The presidential office declined to comment on the report. The White House too, but the Pentagon reportedly acknowledged that it has held discussions with Seoul on buying its ammunition. A U.S. State Department spokesman said Washington will keep the subject of private diplomatic conversations private. The official added that the U.S. has led worldwide efforts to secure assistance from its partners and allies to support Ukraine. South Korea has been ruling out the possibility of providing lethal aid to Kyiv. On Wednesday, Seoul's national security advisor Cho Tae-yong said the government plans to think over whether to send lethal aid to Kyiv after monitoring the situation in Ukraine. As of now, Cho confirmed that there are no plans to send ammunition directly to Kyiv or via Poland. However, talking last month, South Korean President Yoon sung yeol hinted that Seoul might extend its aid for Ukraine beyond humanitarian and economic support when necessary. During his recent visit to the U.S., the president said that South Korea is closely monitoring the situation in Ukraine and will take proper measures to uphold international norms and law. Now, Thursday's Nuri launch was more than just another rocket launch. Nuri could become the key to solving some of the mysteries of the universe and could help protect our planet. And foreign media outlets also had a lot to say about the Nuri launch, saying that it boosted South Korea's hopes of catching up with nearby countries in the regional space race. News outlets across the globe assessed that Nuri's successful delivery of satellites into space marked a significant milestone in the country's space program. The Associated Press said the launch boosted South Korea's hopes of catching up with Asian neighbors, such as China, Japan and India, in a regional space race. It also added that many experts say Thursday's launch will also help the country accumulate technologies needed to operate spy satellites and build long-range missiles. It also called the success a breakthrough in South Korea's ambitions to compete in the space race with its Asian neighbors, and said duty is central to the country's ambitious plan to boost progress in 6G networks, spy satellites and even lunar probes. Meanwhile, Bloomberg said that the mission shows South Korea has the ability to send satellites into orbit from a homegrown space vehicle, as previous launches used rockets from other countries. It also mentioned that duty is about 12 stories high, slightly smaller than France's Ariane 5 rocket. Welcome back. For more news, let's take care on the world in a minute. A Mississippi family demanded a police officer be dismissed and charged with aggravated assault for shooting 11-year-old boy when police responded to the child's own domestic disturbance call from his home. Argentine Vice President Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner slammed the International Monetary Fund, saying that the program agreed to with the multinational leader is holding back the country's economy. 
Speculation surrounding a possible move from Mercedes to Ferrari does not come as a surprise to Lewis Hamilton, the seven-time world champion said ahead of the Monaco Grand Prix. This comes as Charles Leclerc joked with Lewis Hamilton ahead of the Monaco Grand Prix about the prospect of the seven-time F1 champion joining him next season at Ferrari. Erling Haaland was named the Football Writers Association Footballer of the Year in a ceremony in London. The Man City forward received 82% of the votes and was presented with the trophy, first won by Valdo winner Sir Stanley Matthews in 1948 by FWHR John Cross. A car collided with the front gates of Downing Street where Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's office and residence is based. London police said adding one person had been arrested on suspicion of dangerous driving. That is all from us here at World News Tonight. Join us again on Monday as we keep you up to date with the latest from around the world. In case you miss any of the stories tonight, you can watch the whole program on our YouTube channel youtube.com slash English. This week's broadcast ends with dancing, jokes and smiles flooding the streets of downtown Lima as clowns march through the streets to celebrate Peru's Clown Day. Thank you and good night.